Welcome to the Mellafella Crypto Channel. I'm the Mellafella, back to share my adventures in crypto with you. Be aware, this is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. Also, it is cold in these crypto streets, so always, always, always do your own research. Invest no more than what you're willing to lose and protect your things. In this video, I'm going to cover a private key recovery tool that I came across while searching on how I could get my private key for my stable fund wallet or for one of my stable fund wallets. Um, in a couple of my videos, um, you know, last week I made mention of my uh, importing my stable fund wallet into MetaMask in order to remove um, any other residual coins that I had in that wallet. The reason I did that is I had deleted the uh, stable fund app off of my mobile devices and um, you know, the stable fund sites no longer accessible. So I can't access my, the wallet that way, but I did copy uh, my uh, key uh, phrases and I caught uh, my private key for one of my wallets, but there were a couple of wallets where I forgot to get my private key for whatever reason. But uh, luckily I was able to find this tool get my private keys, get access to those wallets and, and carry on. So I'm doing this video just to show uh, the process that I went through uh, to do that. Now, proceed with caution here. Uh, I was kind of hesitant to put this video up, as I mentioned in a video that I posted yesterday, but uh, I wanted to do a few more tests just to confirm uh, the legitimacy. Seems like it works. And also, uh, there are three ways that you can access this tool. One is an online version, which I would not recommend because you don't know uh, what's behind it or if it's been hacked or, you know, if there's some sort of database that's collecting your key phrases and your private keys, which, you know, you're giving up access to your wallet essentially by doing that. Um, the, you can download a standalone version, which I'm going to demonstrate. Uh, that standalone version gives you a bit more control. Um, you can use it on a device that is not connected to a network um, and and run the process and, and get access to your private key and carry forward. And or if you are a developer or, a or comfortable, familiar with coding, uh, you can recompile this HTML file uh, and use that so that uh, you are a bit more confident that uh, you are using something that isn't malicious. So I just wanted to throw that out there before I proceed. So getting to the tool itself, uh, this tool, um, it's called the BIP 39 tool. It was created or posted by Ian Coleman. So shout out to Ian Coleman uh, for putting this out. Um, there is a link to the tool in the description area so you don't have to worry about trying to grab it from here. But uh, uh, if you want to um, use this tool, there is a link to the description area where you can find it. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, this kind of shows you the link to the online version, which I don't recommend. And then there's a standalone offline version, which I'm going to demonstrate. So to get to the standalone version, uh, you go to releases. Well, let me step back before I we go further. Um, Again, if you want to give Ian a donation, this is an awesome tool. If you feel the need, uh, here's uh, some information at the bottom of this page if you want to do that. So if you want to give some love to Ian Coleman, uh, you can do that by way of the uh, donation area here below. So let's carry forward. So I'm going to go to the standalone offline version by clicking the releases area. All right. And as I scroll down, here's the standalone HTML file that I'm going to download. Again, if you are a coder, you can get the source code here and recompile this and get your own HTML file that uh, you, you would have built from that process. But we're not going to do that here. So I'm going to download this file. Double click. All right. And going to open it and first confirm that it is a file that's on my uh, local desktop. So I can see that by way of the path 
to the file name. This will be my fifth time downloading this. Uh, so uh, number four is the file name. So I know I have a point of reference that this is on my uh, desktop. So as uh, I, I want to just kind of cover what the code converter page looks like before we go any further. Uh, we're only going to use a couple of sections in uh, on this page, so don't get overwhelmed by all of what you see here. But I'm going to scroll down first to kind of show you what to be on the lookout for. So after you enter uh, the coin, and in this case, we're going to select Ethereum as the coin type, and then enter a key phrase. What we're going to look for is the address should pop up in this area here. And then to the direct right of that, we're going to see the private key. Okay, so I'm going to use a private key from a test wallet that I set up. So I went and copied the private key. So I'm going to scroll up. And as I mentioned before, we're going to use Ethereum. So I am going to go to the coin section here. Use the drop down. And I am going to choose Ethereum. Immediately, I get this invalid root key error message. No problem. So here, I'm going to pop in my pasted key phrase. It's calculating, and as I mentioned before, here's the address, and here's my private key. Private key's right there. So I'm going to confirm that this is the right account, because this, again, is my test wallet. So I'm going to confirm that this is the right account by going to my trust wallet and I'm going to select receive. And as you can see here, without copying my full address, this is my address. Bam, bam. So if you want to see that in further detail, I'm just going to copy the address and I'm going to paste it here. So that's my full address right there. Full test address. Go back to the tool. It's the exact same. So there you have it. So uh, what I would do, well, a couple of things just to note there could you could have some challenges depending on uh, how your key phrase was structured. Now these key phrases are based typically based on the uh, BIP 39 standard, and there's a word list associated with that. And I'm going to click on this page to kind of show you what that looks like. I did have some difficulty with one of my wallets because I had a word that is not part of the words list. Fortunately for that particular wallet, I had my key, uh, my private key, so there's no issue on my end. But if you run into a challenge and you may get an error message that um, the word that you are attempting to use is not in the word list and it may come back with a suggested word to use. Don't use that suggested word because that's not going to be your wallet. Okay. Um, so, you know, the first thing you do, if you get that message, come over to this page and I'll include a link for this as well and just validate that your uh, the word that you're looking for is in this list. If the word that you're looking for is not listed here, then you may be out of luck. I don't know of another tool similar to um, the BIP 39 tool that I'm showing you uh, to uh, in the event that, you know, there's another tool out there that is similar to this that will accept the word, the, you know, another word list. If I find that I'll post a video, but for this tool, it's going to be limited to the BIP 39 standard word list that I have here. All right. Um, I'll also include a link for you to a review regarding seed phrases and, and seed phrase security and, and how this whole process works. So 
the way that uh, this tool operates, it's based on some calculations and how to um, translate a key phrase into hexadecimal. So this kind of helps talk to that at a high level and I will include that in the, or include this in the description area below. So, but that's it. Uh, just wanted to take some time out and do a demo of this key phrase, or not key phrase, but uh, uh, private key recovery tool. So thanks all. Mellafella is out.